Good morning and welcome to the WellMed Charitable Foundation Caregiver Teleconnection Series. Today we have a very deeply, um, what should I say, hard to figure out uh, tips and guidance on toileting for persons who are incontinent and have dementia. So we are gonna have Dear Lucy, uh, Lucy Barilak, who's going to present for us. And she has a master's degree in social work from McGill University. She's presently working as a consultant for a health network in Montreal, Canada. She's been involved in various research projects and has published numerous articles related to caregiving issues. She has lectured at several universities and colleges on innovative approaches to caregiving and presents annually at international and national conferences. Lucy is also a consultant for private industry in the United States, including her work with the WellMed Charitable Foundation and their clinics in Texas. And in addition, Lucy would like you to know that she was a caregiver of her own mother for about 10 years. And with that, Lucy, thank you so much for being here today and for preparing this, <laughs> this very touchy subject in such a fine way. Yeah, thank you so much, Evelyn, and thank you, Minerva who's gonna be helping me with the slides. So welcome everyone. So today the session will be a one hour session, but I will remain after the hour is over for an additional half hour. We're gonna shut the recording down. So if you have any questions that you feel you wanna ask, I'll be more than happy to answer them for you or any comments that you have. Um, and you don't have to use your name and it's totally anonymous. So I welcome you. Well, today I will be speaking about a taboo subject, dementia and toileting, a subject that was identified to me by many caregivers who are caring for someone with dementia. Many, um, many of them were embarrassed to ask certain questions. For example, wiping my husband after he, was, after he went to the toilet is very difficult for me to perform. Am I a bad person? In another example, I really feel very embarrassed to tell my mother that she needs to wipe herself. It appears that she is embarrassed to do so in front of me. I know that if I don't watch her, she will not do the task and I'm concerned about infection. How do I handle this? So today's an open discussion. No questions or remarks are problematic. The topic is very important and it really needs to be addressed. So before we start, if we can go to the next slide, please. What I'm gonna be talking today to you about is understanding dementia and the toilet issues, because some people don't realize that people with dementia don't necessarily have any issues with their bladder or their functioning, but it has to do with the dementia itself. And I'll also be talking about what causes toilet problems and incontinence, what are the risks for someone who suffers from incontinence, tips on how to manage it, what caregivers need to do for themselves, all right? You know, incontinence in people with dementia is one of the factors many times associated with the decision to move the person to a care home. Managing incontinence adds to the caregiver's burden and has been reported by family caregivers as more difficult to manage than the behavioral symptoms of dementia. And that's noted in a lot of research. But it does not have to be so. Many caregivers and their loved ones can remain at home with incontinence issues. If the caregiver has the tools, information, education, ability to manage this um, issue while maintaining the person's dignity, as well as the caregiver's satisfaction and caring for the person at home. So in general, caregiving can be very rewarding as I know personally, so I wanna really say that, but very challenging as well. Now, I do want to tell you that um, whether you become a caregiver gradually or all of a sudden due to a crisis or whether you are a caregiver willingly or by default, many emotions surface, you know, surface when you take on the job of caregiving. 
Some of these feelings happen right away and some don't surface until you have been a caregiver for a while. And I know that from my personal experience. Whatever your situation, it's important to remember that you too are important. All of your emotions, good and bad, about caregiving are not only allowed, but valued and important. My feeling, you know, many feelings come up when you are caring for someone day in and day out. Many caregivers set out saying, this won't happen to me. I love my mother, father, husband, partner, wife, sister, brother, friend, etc. But after a while, the negative emotions that we tend to kind of bury or pretend we aren't feeling come up. Caregivers are often reluctant to express their negative feelings for fear that they will be judged by others or judge themselves or don't want to burden others with their problems. So here are some emotions that you may be feeling. And as I said, it's, you know, especially if your loved one has incontinence issues and they're very normal. So don't, uh, don't look at yourself in a negative way. You might be ambivalent, there's anger, anxiety, crankiness, irritation, depression, sadness, disgust, embarrassment, fear, frustration, there could be grief, you can be impatient, it's all normal, lack of appreciation, there's loneliness, there is a loss of the relationship, resentment, and just plain being tired. Okay, so if you're feeling any, um, some of these emotions, you are only human. I will elaborate more on how and what you need to do to manage with your emotions. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I think so, the reason that I'm sort of focusing on this is that this is such a, um, a difficult issue to manage. And sometimes people feel like, oh, my God, how could I even be feeling that about the person that I'm supposedly love or care about, but it's normal. So let's get back to toileting. We'll talk about emotions a little bit later on and all the things and how to manage those stressors. So firstly, when dealing with issues of incontinence, it's important to rule out health reasons that may have little or nothing to do with dementia. Um, difficulty going to the bathroom can be a sign of a urinary tract infection dietary or hydration issues, not eating enough, healthy food, um, easily digested food or drinking enough water, prostate problems uh, in men, or side effects from medications, for example, sleeping pills uh, can cause incontinence. Um, consult with your loved one's doctor to be sure none of these are factors that are causing the incontinence. So as I said before, it might have nothing to do with their health, but more with the dementia. But at the other end, it could be something that you're not even aware about and it needs to be looked after. It's common for people to have more difficulties using the toilet as they get older, particularly if they have dementia. Accidents and incontinence can cause problems, especially as the person's condition progresses. They can be upsetting for the person with dementia and difficult when you're supporting them. Now, many people find it difficult to talk about these issues, and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing, to give you an opportunity to talk about it. However, support is available, and with the right help and advice, incontinence and toilet problems can be managed or sometimes even prevented. So, you know, experiencing toilet problems and incontinence can be challenging, as I said, for the caregiver and the person you are caring for. It requires patience, understanding, and a compassionate approach. All right. So I'm going to open it up for questions, no doubt, but let's just go over about dementia and toileting. Okay? I just want to make it clear. Toileting refers to an individual's ability to independently get to the toilet, use it properly, and clean themselves effectively. Although this is uh, second nature for most people, dementia patients face a variety of challenges that interfere with their daily ability to use it, you know, to use the toilet, okay? It does not necessarily mean that they have a problem with that. It's the dementia that's actually affecting it. And I'm going to certainly look, I'm going to, we're going to look at all the challenges that people with dementia face 
and why this is happening, why they appear to be incontinent, and how can you support them in that? But before I go any further, are there any questions or any comments that you would like to make? So folks, this is your opportunity. If you have a certain issue that you want to make sure that Lucy talks about, you could tell us now, or if you just want to comment on what Lucy's already said or share an experience, we would love that. Just unmute yourself, or if you're on the phone, press star six. And in the meantime, if we can go to slide three, that would be great. The next slide, please. All right, so while you're thinking about it, and there might be a lot of things that you wanna ask, and maybe you would prefer to ask them at the end of the session, and the half hour later, that's okay too. All right, so let's look at what causes toilet problems. Obviously, remember that every individual with dementia is unique, and strategies that work for one person might not work for another, so do you have, there has to be flexibility, adaptability, and compassion are crucial aspects of caring in such situation. So let's go over that. So obviously there is cognitive impairment. Dementia affects cognitive functioning, including the ability to recognize and respond to bodily cues. Individuals may not be able to recognize um, the sensation of needing to use the toilet. And that's important to keep in mind. Now, the other one could be communication challenges. As dementia progresses, communication skills deteriorate. The person may have difficulty expressing their needs to use the bathroom or understanding instructions from the caregiver. So even though they really want to tell you, but you just don't know how to do it, and that's when an accident might happen. Now, there's also mobility um, issues. Dementia can lead to physical limitations, making it challenging for individuals to reach the bathroom in time, mm -hmm. All right? So that if some people also have walkers or canes, so you could just imagine that. Now, memory loss, forgetfulness can cause individuals to forget where the bathroom is located or to forget that they need to use it. Now, I know one caregiver in particular couldn't understand why her husband was going to the bathroom in one of the bedrooms. It was so upsetting, you could just very well imagine what was that all about. But the thing is that once she understood that, you know, that he really did, he didn't recognize, he didn't realize that he wasn't in the bathroom. And we're going to talk a little bit more about little tips that I'm going to give you in, in this area. Now, there's also sensory changes. Dementia can affect sensory perception, making it harder for the individual to recognize the sensation of a full bladder or a bowel. Now, medication side effects, I spoke a little bit about it, but some medications used to manage dementia symptoms or other health conditions can affect bladder and bowel control. That's why it's so important to either speak to the doctor if this is something new that's happening, or even if it's not, to make sure that these are not side effects. And a person that can really help you a lot with that is the pharmacist. They re really know their medication. And so please don't hesitate to call and ask these questions. Now, there can also be uh, physical health conditions that you're unaware of. Underlying health issues, such as I said before, could be an infection. They can be constipated and can tell you that they're constipated. Or there's prostate problems in men uh, can contribute to incontinence. Now, you might think, okay, anxiety and stress. Yes, anxiety and stress changes in routine, unfamiliar environment, and the presence of other people can cause anxiety, which may impact a person's ability to control their bladder and bowel. They could be really, really scared and stressed out. And you know, uh, uh, unfortunately, even if you don't have dementia, many times people who get really scared lose their, uh, their control over their bladder. Um, or, or even uh, other functions as well. 
So there's also a lack of awareness. People with dementia might not be aware of the consequences of their actions leading to accidents. You know, they just don't realize. So they went to the bathroom in a place that wasn't, um, that they shouldn't have, or they made a mess in the bathroom and you're horrified to see that and it's upsetting. But just keep in mind that they're not even aware of that. So for you to get angry, or upset, I understand that you're allowed to be angry and upset, but just remember and just think about it. It's the disease that's doing it, it's not them. They have no clue about what they're doing at that particular moment. Not an easy thing to deal with, I have to tell you, but I think as long as you kind of realize that they're not doing this on purpose, it just makes it easier to deal with. So there's also that whole, you know, with dementia, there's a loss of inhibition in many areas, not only about um, urine, urine and, 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 and bowel movements. There's inhibition about things that they come out and say that they would never say or behavior that they would never do. It could lead to, the law, into a loss of social inhibition, causing some individuals to exhibit behavior they wouldn't have in the past, including inappropriate urination or defecation. And that is so, um, so difficult for caregivers to deal with that issue. It's, um, and, and many caregivers would tell me like, it's like, it's beyond anything. But once they kind of understand it a little better, there are things that we can do together to support you. Now, there's also altered perception of time, believe it or not. There's a distorted sense of time can affect the individual's ability to wait for the appropriate time to use the toilet. So when we talk about dementia, it's not only that they are forgetful. It's not only that they don't remember. It's all these other factors that come into play with dementia and then how it affects it, especially with any toilet issues, some of it, like if they're inhibition or they're not, you know, they could say things, you can manage it, but you could just very well imagine what it's like for um, people caring for someone when they don't have the ability to even understand what's going on. So as the dementia progresses, there can be increased disorientation. Even in familiar settings, they may tend to get confused more easily while carrying out multiple step processes, okay? So before I go any further, and I know I said a lot, are there any questions or any comments that you may have? We can take the opportunity to do that now. So folks, if you're on the phone, please press star six and you can unmute yourself. And if you're on Zoom, hand up, chat room, Unmute yourself. We'd love to hear from you. Got a quiet group today. And I can very well understand why. I'm just so glad you're listening and that you're here. Obviously, if you're with us, is something that you're dealing with. So I don't feel pressured that you have to speak up. Um, we'll have an opportunity later. But Apart from everything that I'm saying about it, it, there are risks for someone who suffers from incontinence. And I want to talk about that a little bit um, and how to, to deal with that. You know, some, and I have to say that some of these risks are not associated to seniors with dementia only. It's for people who suffer from bladder or bowel difficulties or incontinence in general. I mean, there are many seniors who um, don't have dementia, but do have to wear uh, protective pads or briefs or even especially at night. But hygiene is so important in these cases as well. But I do want to look at that and, and we'll get into it a little bit more. So if we can move to the next slide, please. So incontinence can pose several risks and challenges to individuals who experience it. The impact of this risk can, uh, can vary based on the severity of the incontinence, the underlying causes, and the person's overall health. So here are some potential risks associated with incontinence. So obviously, there will be skin issues. Prolonged exposure to urine or feces can lead to skin irritation, rashes, and even more serious conditions like pressure ulcers, which we call bed sores, 
the constant moisture uh, can weaken the skin as protective barrier. So if you are a caregiver to someone possibly in long-term care, this is something you really need to be very conscious about um, and be able to uh, make sure that the person that you, that your loved one is not sitting in a diaper all, uh, all day. I see that there was something in the chat. Did I miss it? No, no, I can read it to you. Sure. Any impact of alcohol, types of drinks and timing after 8 p.m. is a no-no, really. It's an excellent question, an excellent thought. And I'm going to talk exactly about that a little bit later. So I didn't see your name, but I want to thank you for that. James, James, it was James. James. Thank you for that, James. I will talk a little bit more about that. That's a great tip to give. So, um, okay, so we talked about, okay, now urinary tract infection, okay, incontinence can increase the risk of urinary tract infection. Bacteria present in urine can enter the urinary tract more easily when there is a leakage leading to infection that can cause discomfort and require medical uh, treatment. So, you know, these are serious issues. Now, the other thing, it's more on the social aspect of it. So social isolation and embarrassment and continence can cause embarrassment and anxiety, leading individuals to avoid social interactions and potentially isolating themselves from others. As I said, you don't have, you know, seniors who do have incontinence and are, and are not necessarily have dementia. This can happen. So you really have to be cautious about so there is a reduced quality of life, the physical discomfort, the emotional stress, and the limitations of daily activities that incontinence can cause may lead to reduced overall quality of, of life. And especially for somebody who has dementia, you might you know, be reluctant to take them out even to the shopping center or to any sort of family events because you're concerned so you could see how that actually can impact them, even though they have dementia, because we know that um, we shouldn't isolate them or isolate ourselves and engaging in all kinds of activities really does help um, not to reduce the dementia, but to have a quality of life. Now, there's also the fall risk frequent uh, trips to the bathroom or the need to use mobility aids while Running to the bathroom can increase the risk of falls, particularly in older adults, obviously, especially if they have a walker or a cane. Now, there is a psychological impact and, you know, incontinence can lead to feeling of shame, frustration and loss of self-esteem. It may contribute to mental health issues such as depression and anxiety. Now, even if the person has dementia, they could still be embarrassed they could still really feel badly about what happened. And especially if your reaction to it is a negative and you possibly, because you're so frustrated, uh, can make them feel um, those feelings as well. Now, now, there's also the whole issue of compromised hygiene. Individuals may struggle to maintain proper hygiene as we talk. You know, there's challenges in getting your clothes off and putting them back on. And as you're taking the clothes off, even if they're still able to go to the bathroom um, and they can't get their clothes off, there could be an accident. So it is important to have proper clothing that is really easy for them to get out. Now, there's dehydration. Some individuals... Uh, intentionally reduce their fluid intake to minimize the frequency of bathroom trips, which can lead to dehydration and it's associated with the health risks. You know, it's that balancing act of how much water should you be giving them or not. The sleep disturbance, can you, you know, there's bedwetting, um, can disrupt sleep patterns leading to poor sleep quality. And then, and then they're really tired during the day and can be cranky. So there's so many things that are involved and it's not just being incontinent. So there's cognitive and functional decline in individuals with cognitive impairments, such as, you know, inability to recognize or respond to the urge, as I said before, to use the bathroom can lead to further cognitive decline or behavioral issues. They found that out, I mean, I did a lot of research on this that I wasn't all that aware of in the beginning. And it was interesting that that whole notion of 
of um, that can lead to further cognitive decline because of the behavior, because it so affects them. Now, there's also caregiver burden. We're talking about it can be physically demanding and emotionally challenging for caregivers, potentially contributing to caregiver stress and burnout. So you really have to be aware of how you yourself are functioning. Now there's a financial cost management uh, can involve purchasing all kinds of products like adult briefs, bedpans, skincare supplies, additional medical treatment and interventions uh, that may uh, be of cost to you. Now, malnutrition, you wouldn't think about that, but the need to rush to the bathroom or the embarrassment of incontinence can lead to sometimes skipping meals or not eating adequately. And as I said, not um, drinking enough. So these are really all things that we have to kind of take into consideration. It's not just skin. Um, it's all the things that are involved as someone living their lives with quality. So let me stop for a minute and ask if anybody would like to make a comment um, or would like to ask a question. So if you're on the phone, you can press star six. And if you're on Zoom, we'd love to hear from you. All right, uh, area code 630, please go ahead. Yes, I'd like to know um, how I can get my husband to uh, take care of his hygiene better. He seems to, you know, have incontinence and then he has, he has a hard time controlling his bladder, but yet he doesn't seem to remember to, to take care of his hygiene. Do you have any clues? Yeah. Well, you know what, these are all, um, all of the things that I was talking about. It's a perfect example of someone who is cognitively impaired. I definitely have clues and I definitely have tips that I'm going to talk about that. But I wanna thank you for that. Um, it's not, you know, it's not easy to talk about this issue because, and even, and so I appreciate you even asking this question, which I will definitely address uh, very shortly. But I think that also it's important to keep in mind how incontinence can affect the relationship, all right? Um, that because it's so intimate and we don't talk about these things, you know, we know we all go to the bathroom, right? But in relationships, most of the time people are, you know, you're kind of, um, you keep the door closed when you go to the bathroom and all bodily functions. Sometimes we laugh about it because we, you know, there's a little fart going on here and there. But when you when you have to deal with people, especially uh, spouses or 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 parents, and if you're not of the same sex, and if you have to assist, let's say, a uh, son needing to assist it, his mother, so we just have to really recognize how how that is affecting that relationship, that intimacy, and with spouses or partners, the whole it, the same thing happens. So. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that, but I just wanted to bring it up. It's a it's a difficult issue to talk about, but it's important to be able to talk about that. And if you do need support and help, and if you do need some counseling around that issue, uh, please go and get it. So we're going to go to uh, the next slide. That's okay. We're getting to the tips. We're getting to the tips. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> So uh, what I want to say, so like bathing and showering, difficulty using the toilet can be intimate and embarrassing um, and presents a real challenge for people with dementia and their caregiver. The best way to approach toileting problems for someone with dementia is to take the following step towards an easier, less emotional experience. So what is really important first and foremost is set up the bathroom to make it as easy as possible for the person to get to um, and off the toilet, for example, having a raised toilet seat and grab bars, okay? I'm sure a lot of you have already done that, but uh, it's important to make sure if you haven't, that's the first step. Okay, so gentle reminders, what do I mean by that? Preventing toilet issues may be as simple as reminding your loved one 
to use the bathroom every two to four hours. This is what they're actually recommending. An occasional prompt can get your loved one up and headed to the bathroom. And then it's a good idea to check the toilet uh, to see if it was used and uh, that your loved one didn't get distracted or have an accident. I saw something on the chat that I would like to address. Okay, this is from James. <clears throat> he says, not drinking enough water, not eight glasses per day, but what about brand types? Brand types? Fiber types mixed with water as a routine, a routine for the caregiver? A shared pause moment? Okay, so you're you're really talking about um, other things to help um, with the situation. Again, I have to say to you that uh, it depends what medication the person is on. And I personally would not do anything or buy anything without first getting in touch with the doctor or your pharmacist, just to make sure that all these things would be okay for that particular person to use. Okay. Thank you, James. Yes, thank you very much. So let's talk about smart drinking. Limit the amount of liquid your loved one drinks before bed to reduce the need for nighttime bathroom trips. Be careful not to dehydrate. It's a balancing act. However, um, as dehydration can lead to problems, as I said before, including headaches, believe it or not. Avoid alcohol and caffeine later in the day. They may not, you know, they not only affect the sleep, but also act as diuretics that might increase the need to go. So I think it was James who made that comment, if I'm if I'm right. Yes. So, so th thank you for that. Now, it's also important to watch for signals. So if your loved one is fidgeting, tagging clothes, especially in front of the pants, or generally agitated, this could be a sign that it's bathroom time. Be routine. Establish a routine times of the day for bathroom breaks. That is important. You want your loved one going about every two to four hours. Most people have bowel movements at regular, regularly the same time uh, daily, usually in the morning. And encouraging regularity is a smart strategy. Establishing routine is vital in most aspects of caregiving and toileting is no exception. Now, as you're listening to me, you're probably saying something more on my plate to deal with, but you know, if you really want to be able to manage that, a routine is important. Now, the other thing is don't rush. Going to the bathroom might take a while. So I say the same thing when it, the whole issue of bathing, you need to give yourself time. You know, I know it's hard to not rush because this can happen at a time when you're really, really rushing and need to do something, but try to sort of walk away or step out of view and wait patiently for your loved one to finish. You know, and the other thing is sit instead of stand, especially for men may need to sit down when they urinate, especially in the later stages of dementia, when balance and falling are a bigger issue. So that is important. Now, again, I'm emphasizing be sensitive, like um, showering, needing help with the toilet can bring up feelings of embarrassment and loss of dignity. Some people find incontinent, and, you know, being incontinent, uh, demeaning, uh, respect this and don't appear upset if you have to deal with an accident. You really, really have to um, stay calm and act fast, respond quickly to accidents because they can cause, as I said, skin irritation and discomfort, gently washed soiled areas and uh, dry carefully. Now, before I go any further, I do want to respond to the lady who, who talked about, who asked about how can you encourage your husband to have better hygiene? Now, what I want to say to you, it really all depends on how progressive is the dementia. He might not have the ability to do that for himself. So maybe sometimes it might be easier to have these wet ones handy in the bathroom and just giving him a little coaching. Now, some of these wet ones now, uh, they can be flushed down the toilet. Uh, before it was hard, they weren't flushable. I think 
people were using baby wipes, but now there's adult wipes. And so the whole idea behind this is to just open the package, leave it there or hand them one and say, um, can you please uh, use that? Be gentle. And um, because really, if I, uh, if I know a little bit more about his condition, I would be able to help you. But at the end of the day, unfortunately, he might not be able to do it on his own. And you have to think about how you feel about um, helping him with hygiene, the same as maybe you need to help him with the shower. If we can go to the, um, um, where are we? Yes, thank you for that, the next one. Now here are a few other tips. So. You know, the whole idea of open door, leave the bathroom door partially open so that your loved one can see what's inside, but be mindful of mirrors because someone with dementia may see a reflection and believe the bathroom is occupied. This has been told to me so many times by caregivers that they look in the mirror they and they, they don't recognize themselves. So many times you really, maybe if, if at all possible, uh, maybe remove the mirror, but I know sometimes it's hard to do that because you have a medicine cabinet with a mirror. So maybe put a picture over it, but that can be uh, an issue. Now, obviously buy protective pads, products that can help with bathroom issues include incontinence pads, it's, they fit snugly inside underwear, the leak-proof covers for beds and chairs. This helps with messes and can also reassure your loved one that panicking isn't necessary if you need to, you know, if it needs to go, if if you, they need to go suddenly. These things are going to happen. Now, um, I see a question which I would like to respond, but I can't see it all. Yeah, Marjorie is asking, what what's the problem with the mirror? She didn't understand that. Hmm. Thank you. I'd love to clarify. So sometimes people with dementia, when they look in the mirror and they see themselves, they don't recognize themselves. They don't realize that it's their image that they're seeing and they get scared. Or they think that someone else is in the bathroom and they go out. So caregivers say to me, he doesn't want to go in the bathroom. He thinks that somebody's there. That might be an issue for you or it might not be. Is that clear? Or should I explain a little more? Okay. Yes, thanks. Okay, you're very, very welcome. Now, I wanna talk about a safe en environment, okay? What I mean by that is make the pathway to the bathroom more easily accessible by making sure that there is adequate lighting, motion sensory nights at light would be helpful. So that, um, you know, and you know what? One caregiver even used reflective tape. She put them on her hardware floors to make a pathway, but that's really up to you. The other thing about safe environment in general with people with dementia, please don't have a cluttered house. It's really very difficult and very dangerous for them as well. Little scattered uh, rugs all over the place or, you know, um, plugs, um, courts that are hanging around. So try to create that safe environment. And I asked that caregiver, you really actually put the tape and she says, yes, I did. And it really, really helped. Um, <clears throat> thank you. It's okay, Minerva, it's jumping around. Again, let's go back to the raised toilets, you know, and again, I'm emphasizing that grab bars is so important. It's just easier and uh, raised toilets, and they're not uh, so expensive and to, you know, regular toilets are very low. I don't know if uh, if you recognize that even in yourself, but a raised toilet seat would be very, very helpful. And again, wipe away wet, wi uh, wet wipes, as I said, would be extremely helpful. They're very flushable. And I wanna talk a little bit about smart, uh, color smart. What do I mean by that? So. This is all from caregivers, I have to tell you, not from the research I did <laughs> by researchers. You know, they said that bright uh, um, colors for the door are a simple way to ensure that your loved one remembers and notices where the bathroom is. And, um, and also, 
So, you know, you can put something on it and you can sign up. You can also label the door with a picture of a toilet and large block letters displaying toilet or bathroom. It's an additional, additional memory aid. Um, and please place the signs at your loved one's line of sight, not too high and not too low. So these are just a few tips that, um, that are really important to keep in mind. I'd like to open it up a little bit more if you have any questions about any other, or if any of you have any other tips that you wanna share with the other caregivers, I would really appreciate that. So if you're on the phone, you press star six or you can unmute yourself. I did wanna say one another thing about Color Smart. Uh, if someone is dehydrated, the color of the urine is a dead giveaway because it becomes very dark. And, you know, if it's dark or if it has any kind of red in it, you need to get that person to the doctor immediately. Thank you so much for that, Evelyn. That's a very good point to make. <clears throat> yeah, it's interesting, but you know, your eyes tell a lot, the colors of your eyes and the skin on your hands tell us a lot about what's going on internally. Okay, so while you're thinking about that, um, I just want to say that I can very well imagine what caregivers are going through, what you're going through if you have to deal with this. You're facing a lot of um, several difficulties. Um, you know, and, and uh, getting back to the emotions, I want to get back to those emotions because it's very much related. So it's not just knowing having tips about how to deal with incontinence. It's having tips of how to deal with that emotional aspect that you're going through when you have to deal with this issue. Um, so caregivers, you know, as I said, you may feel embarrassed, you're frustrated, you really feel icky about some of the things that you need to do. Um, and there are communication challenges, figuring out whether the person needs to use the bathroom or helping them understand instructions. It's can be taking, you know, it's taxing. It's, it's difficult when, especially if they have dementia and they don't understand. Now, there's also that whole issue of privacy and dignity, balancing the need to assist with toiling while respecting the person's privacy and dignity can be challenging. Um, and, you know, and personal hygiene, you, you need ensuring proper hygiene after accidents or helping with bathroom tasks can be physically demanding and emotionally taxing. Um, and there certainly is caregiver stress. There's no doubt about that. And I think if we can go to the next slide, that was me. I should have asked you, Minerva, because I'm talking about all these things. Um, thank you. Um, so there are physical demands um, and they're, you know, finding appropriate solutions. And as I said, the whole impact of the relationship is not easy. And I have to say relationships in general are not easy. And sometimes the relationships wasn't a great relationship to begin with. And all of a sudden now you have to take care of their toileting. Um, so, you know, these are things that I do want to talk. I want you to be able to say to yourself, if I'm feeling these feelings, it's normal. I'm allowed to feel this way. I'm allowed to be frustrated. But at the same time, recognizing that some of these things that are happening, they're not doing it on purpose. I did see something on the chat. Yeah, Minerva said, would putting labels like what you see in high schools or elementary schools be a helpful reminder as well? Absolutely. Anything that if they're still able to, you know, identify and read things, absolutely. Lucy, let me ask you a question. Um, when, you know, have, wiping somebody's backside, say you're a small woman and you've got a big husband or mm -hmm. you're a small husband and you have a big wife, um, wiping somebody's backside can get to the point of being too much for people. And I'm going to talk about that. Absolutely. And remember okay. at the beginning of the conversation when I said, this is one of the factors that many caregivers say, I can handle it as long as they're not incontinent. Okay. okay. Thank you. And, no, but it, it's an excellent point. And I'm, I'm glad that you brought it up because, because I, I, I will emphasize it more, you know, because they just feel that this is, this is like, the turning point. I can't do it anymore. I can't do that. 
because you you should never put yourself in the position of harming yourself if you're talking about lifting and and like if you need to wipe somebody they can't be sitting on the toilet right you need to get them up are they able to get themselves up even if they have bars do you need to kind of help them get up once they're up how do you do that chore so there's many things and it's okay if this is your the point where you feel you're no longer can be caring for this person give yourself permission to look at other options for sure now if we look down there's there's the whole idea of time management to need to frequently you know the whole thing of frequent bathroom breaks and assistance can distract daily uh, routine and time management for you can you imagine that you know you want to do something but you know that you got to take them to the bathroom every few hours and things like that. It's it's important for you to acknowledge that your life is changing. And even if you want to go out and let's say you you hire someone, you have to hire someone who's willing to do these tasks. Not everybody is. So it's also coping with behavior changes, behavior um, symptoms associated with dementia can uh, manifest during toileting leading to challenge they can be angry at you don't touch me don't do it what are you doing all these things take a toll on you so there's physical demands as i was saying the whole idea of transferring managing in tight spaces like bathrooms are not huge big uh, managing equipment like commodes or bedpans can be physically demanding Impact on the relationship, again, I want to emphasize that. For someone with dementia and managing toileting issues can strain family relationship and affect the caregiver's own well-being. So if you're feeling frustrated, angry, embarrassed, having a difficult time with toileting chores, it's okay to acknowledge your feelings and give yourself permission to say to yourself, I'm doing the best that I can, but this is too difficult for me to manage. This is the first step to getting help. You don't need to do this alone, all right? You really, really don't. There are resources in the community, and we're going to talk a little bit about them. If we can go to the next slide, please. So, you know, signs, I, it's important for you to realize these are signs of caregiver stress. You're feeling burdened or worrying all the time. You're feeling tired often or most of the day, sleeping too much or not enough, gaining or losing weight, becoming easily irked or angry, losing interest in activities you used to enjoy. You're feeling sad, having frequent headaches or other pains or health problems. Uh, misusing alcohol, <laughs> drugs, including prescription medication. So if you want to have a good little chuckle, originally I, ha I had said using, <laughs> used, you know, missing alcohol or drugs, but Minerva helped me and changed this. So it's misusing alcohol or drugs, missing your own medical appointments. So if any of these things are happening to you, it's time to look after yourself. You know, too much stress over time can harm your health. As a caregiver, you might feel depressed or anxious. You might not get enough sleep. Uh, you might not eat a balanced, well diet. And you probably are not even exercising because you don't have the time. All of this increases your risk of health conditions such as heart disease and diabetes. And that is from real research about caregivers and their stress. So very quickly, I'd like to kind of go over tips to manage your stress, slide nine. Um, and all of, um, all of my sessions that I do with Dr. Uh, Sklar also, we talk a lot about um, how to manage the stress, the emotional, physical demands of care, stress, even the strongest person, you know, and I have to say personally, even though I knew all these things many times, I was I felt stressed as well. So there are many resources and tools that can help you care for your loved one and yourself. Make sure, you know, make use of them. If you don't take care of yourself, you won't be able to care for anyone else to help manage uh, your stress. Ask and accept help. 
make a list in ways which others can help you, then let them choose how they want to help you. You know, it could include taking the regular, you know, your loved one for a walk, um, cooking a meal for you, helping with uh, medical appointments, focus on what you can do. At times you might feel like you're doing, you're not doing enough, but no one is perfect caregiver. Believe that you're doing the best that you can. Set goals you can reach, break large tasks into small steps that you can do one at a time. Make a list of what's most important. Follow a daily routine. Say no to requests that are draining, such as hosting meals or holidays or other occasions. Or if you really don't want to do something, just say no. Get connected, learn about caregiving resources in your area. There might be classes you can take. You might find caregiver services such as uh, rides, meal delivery, or home help. Join a support group. People in support groups know what you're dealing with. You know, they can be there to, you know, even cheer you up or make new friends. Seek social support. Stay connected to family and friends who support you. Make time each week to visit someone, even if it's just for a walk or a quick cup of coffee. Take care of your health. Find ways to sleep better. Move around if you can exercise. Move as much as you can during the day. Eat healthy meals. Drink plenty of water. See your healthcare professional. Get the vaccines you need in regular health screening. And it's important, tell your healthcare practitioner that you're a caregiver. Talk about your worries and symptoms to them. And I guess what I really want to say, um, and if your caring becomes too overwhelming for you, especially if your loved one is incontinent, give yourself permission to explore other alternatives to your present situation. So we're going to go look at the, um, there are resources, and I'm going to open it up for questions. And I know that Evelyn has other resources that she would like to share with you. Uh, much more than I do since she um, she has them all at her fingertips. <laughs> so these resources are really good. Um, you know, the tips that I gave you, the emotional side, these are all good things that I've been talking about. So you can go on it and, um, and really read it. It's very simple and it was extremely resourceful. You're on, Evelyn. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy, what a beautiful job. Thank you so much for your research, your research um, that you've done on this. Obviously, you've done quite well, very well. And I can tell people that if you're looking for resources locally, you can call 211. If you're looking for um, the Area Agency on Aging in your area, which has some respite dollars that have caregiver specialists who can give you all of the you know referrals that you need if you lo are looking for resources in your neighborhood and you can reach you can find your area agency on aging by going to the elder care locator which is uh, eldercare.gov um, but you can also call them and they have live people who are on computers who can put in your zip code and find stuff in your local area and that number is 800 Six seven seven one 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 six eight hundred six seven seven one 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 six, and I have used that myself, and it's very helpful. And once you get to the Area Agency on Aging, and they are all over the United States. There's six hundred and fifty five of them covering every area of the United States, and you will be able to ask the questions about what is available in your area. And be advised, if you're in a rural area, there's much many fewer resources, but they can help you find whatever there is there. And with that, uh, did you want to ask, open it up? Well, We've got yes, I think we have a few minutes just to open it up for any questions that anybody has. Okay, and, folks. Any anybody, questions at all? Questions, comments. Appreciate your participation today. And we appreciate what you do. Absolutely. The tough job. Area code 715. Go ahead. Area code 715, you're on. 
Not anymore. <laughs> well, thank you, Diana. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know what? What we'll do, Evelyn, is why don't you let them know what's happening? And then what we're going to do is I know that you're going to leave us. Uh, we'll take a two minute break and then uh, we'll close the recording and I'll be back. And so if you want to stay on, you're very good. Okay, area code awesome. 715 is open again. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, good. Good. Thank you. I don't know what happened there. Um, my name is Shelly, and I have a question that might that maybe someone has a, a tip for me regarding my mom. And she has been having more accidents lately, both during the day and at night, and with urine, holding her urine. And what, what the issue, main issue, I believe, is with my mom is that she constantly has either a glass of water or a cup of coffee or both next to her all day long. And it's been very difficult to get her to cut back on her liquids. And I know this is what's causing more accidents. It makes sense. But I guess I'm just looking for ideas to maybe help get her to stop drinking so much liquid during the day. Does your mother have dementia? She, she does. Yes. Yes. What I'm going to say might sound a little bit stranger. Maybe um, have you tried taking away the glass of water or coffee? I, I, well, <laughs> um, well, I said touchy one, one, but I'm just wondering. <laughs> well, her laugh says well, everything. One, <laughs> here, here's one, one thing that, that we did do earlier this week is um, without her knowing, I completely threw away her regular coffee. She feels like she has to have regular coffee versus decaf, even though she can't tell the difference. She doesn't know the difference. Um, so we, we were able to throw away the caffeinated coffee so that she would just drink decaf. And what, and what I've been doing over probably the last week and a half is I bought a couple different things to help her with, she says she has a dry mouth and that's why she has to constantly be drinking water. So I bought her different lozenges okay. to keep next to her recliner during the day to put in, you know, pop them into her mouth. And there's also a mouth spray, bought her a mouth spray that's supposed to help um, with dry mouth, but to actually take them away from her is, I, I have to say no. Okay. So this might be a little bit of tough love, you know, uh, I'm, I'm so glad that you, I was going to say about candies and the spray because she probably might have a dry mouth. What I'm trying to say is that it could be just something, a habit that she's gotten into. Now you can try it a little bit and what you could do is you could take the coffee away or the glass of water. She might get upset about it, but why don't you try to distract her at that point? Is maybe start talking to her about something else or put some music on or the TV. I know it might be difficult, but it might be something that she's going to get used to and not remember um, that she needs her coffee all the time. It's a bit of tough love. Are you willing to at least try it? Yeah, I, th <laughs> I, I think so. I think so. Um, okay. I know we, we have to do something because, yeah. She's, yeah, she's having more accidents. And so we do need to do something for sure. Is she combative? No. Okay, oh, good. that's good. But there was some, there was a social worker that might have another tip. I saw it on the... Um, on the uh, something written. Can you read it for me? Barbara says, I'm a social worker and work with a woman with dementia who thinks she's wet all the time and wears many pads, multiple uh, pairs of depends, carries towels and won't go out for fear of embarrassing herself. This is time consuming, expensive, isolating, etc. but she is never wet. Any thoughts? Now, do you want to save this one for after? Yeah, I'm going to save this one for after because Evelyn has to leave us. But okay. for the one, but for <laughs> please try it with your mom, especially if she's not combative and you can distract her with something else if she says something. And every day, try to take a little bit more aware from her. 
obviously give, keep her hydrated, but maybe it should only be like either three times a day or whatever you think is necessary. I hope you stay with us a little bit longer, Evelyn. Um, yeah, it's after the hour, so we're going to let Thank you go. You. Yes, I'm, gonna, I'm going to just do a little bit of cleanup here. There were a lot of people on the phone today who's or on the call today whose name I didn't recognize, not that I memorized them. But I would say to you, if you got this number or the link from someone else and you're not signed up, you know, with the caregiver teleconnection, you won't be getting these resources. You won't get the slides with the resources at the end. So please call our customer service um, representative, Minerva. If you're not signed up already, her number is 866-390-6491. Eight six six three nine zero six four nine one, and get registered. And if you register, you'll also get the monthly calendar. And we've got really like nine more sessions this month, so you've got a lot of uh, very interesting topics that you'll be able to explore. And with that, I just want to thank you so much, Lucy, for the great research. You're emotionally, you know, so supportive of people who are doing this very difficult job. I wanna thank the people who are on the phone for joining us today and doing that very difficult job. And Lucy's gonna stay on the phone and I'm gonna just gonna thank one more person, one more entity, and that's the WellMed Charitable Foundation for funding all of these great topics, You know, the speakers, the podcasts that are on www.caregivertelleconnection.org. And with that, I'm gonna stop the recording and thank you all so much for being here today. Thank you, Evelyn, so much. Goodbye and have a good day. Thank so for you. those of you 